Hi, uh, willkommen in einem anderen in Afrikans video or welcome to yet another exciting video, in this case part 9 of my battle series, in this case covering the Battle of Tribia. The Battle of uh, Tribia was a battle fought between the Carthaginians and Romans on either the 22nd or 23rd of December 218 BC, close to the town of Placentia. This video is mainly focused on looking at the battle from a figure game point of view, which includes the order of battle, troop types, and flow of the battle. If you wish a big picture of why the battle was fought, then this may not be the video for you. But if you want to know about the troop types, force mixes, and what actually occurred on the battlefield, then continue to watch this video. One of the big issues I normally have with uh, doing these videos for ancients is a lack of source material. Now, luckily in this case, there is a reasonable amount of source material by at least ancient standards of this battle. Now, obviously, there is a lot of gaps which can only be filled in by guesswork. I'll select the version of the guesswork that seems most reasonable and use that as my baseline. But we'll mention other sources or other guesses if applicable. Let's start by covering the order of battle and troop types of the Roman army. Our main source comes from Polybius, with Livy being a possibly secondary, less reliable source. The combined force which Sempronius led into battle included four Roman legions. At full strength, these Roman legions should have mustered 16,800 men, including 4,800 abilities. At least one of the legions is known to have been significantly understrength. Polybius gives us a total of 16,000 Romans, Livy 18,000. In addition, there were approximately 20,000 Allied infantry, comprising four Latin Allied legions and a strong force of Gauls. Mention is made of 6,000 light infantry, and it is unclear whether these are included in the 36,000 or 38,000, if you use Livy infantry, or in addition to them. As the normal, nominal total number of abilities from eight legions is about 9,600, and it is known that many of these were lost at the Battle of Atticinus, most modern historians assume that, that the 6,000 are included within the total number of infantry given. There were also 4,000 cavalry, a mixture of Romans, Latin, Allies, and Gauls. As we have some good material from Polybius concerning the structure of the Roman legion, let's go over it. Polybius indicates a legion consisted of 4,200 men each. The legion consisted of 1,200 hastati, 1,200 principatis, and 600 triali. Polybius does not mention this, but we could assume 1,200 abilities, which gives us 4,200 men in total. The legion also had a cavalry force of 300, although I'm uncertain if this was in addition to the 4,200 men or were included. The source I'm using assumes that this was in addition, so I'm going to assume in most cases cavalry were counted separately. For comparison purposes, this shows the structure of a standard consular army from the wiki. There were two consular armies in this battle. Using an enormous amount of guesswork, uh, we can probably arrive at the following troop type compositions. It's possible the Allied legions employed troops which fought in their traditional form, thus were not probably legionnaires. It's also possible there was a higher percentage of skirmishes among the Latin allies. We know the Gauls were involved, but the number provided here is pure guesswork. We do know some Gauls um, sort of revolted in the Roman camp before the battle and ran off to join Hannibal. I have to assume that these were in addition to the number that you see here. Once again, as you can see, there's an enormous amount of guesswork involved in this uh, trying to calculate the force mixes. The book and board game Lost Battles um, has a scenario of this battle, and it shows the Roman army consisting of eight veteran legionnaire units, six average legionnaire units, one average heavy infantry unit, one levy light infantry unit, and three average heavy cavalry units. If the cavalry represents 4,000, then each unit represents about 1,300 cavalry. The scale for the infantry is probably double this at 2,600 per average unit. The army lists for this um, comes from the same source that I'm using the, from Wiki and other sources. So I'm only putting here, this here as a FYI, and I'll be using the uh, source material from Polybius rather than you know, any kind of assumption that you see here. Let's try and look at the uh, troop types. So I've used the latest DBMM army list to give me the idea of the troop types available to the Romans in this period and what may have been actually fueled in this battle. This shows the core troops available for the Romans during the entire period of 275 BC to 105 BC. 
It's uh, likely the Romans may have had up to 1,200 Roman cavalry, uh, which is 4 by 300. They are considered as reasonable quality in this army list. Now, if the Romans had 1,200 Roman cavalry, then they must have had about 2,800 Allied cavalry, with a quarter being reasonable quality and the remainder as inferior. It's also possible, as some of the cavalry here may have been Gallic cavalry. It's probably unlikely the Romans had any true light skirmishing cavalry, although it's possible part of the Allied cavalry may have consisted of Tarentine light cavalry. While it's uh, almost impossible that the Romans possessed any Spanish cavalry, it's possible some Gaelic cavalry may have been involved in the Roman cavalry total. Now we come to the bedrock of the Roman army, which were the legionnaires, or the Hastati and Principit, to be specific. It's assumed that most of the Italian allies were armed in the Roman manner. The army list has a troop type called levies, which almost certainly were the velites. I'm uncertain why they're called levies rather than velites in the army list. I am guessing it's to differentiate them from the later better quality velites. Later, you can upgrade these troops to a much higher quality skirmish troop type. So in this battle, we have to assume they're inferior or low quality, which seems reasonable. The Triari were the spear-armed Romans, normally in the third line, and consisted of their most experienced and oldest troop types. The Romans had a practice of selecting the highest quality allied tro troops to form special reserve formation, which is uh, what this troop type represents. I'm uncertain if they existed in this battle, but it's entirely possible there may have been small detachments in the rear acting as reserves. While it's possible some skirmish archers were present, I suspect if they were, they were incredibly low numbers. The same uh, applies with the slingers. If they were present, which I probably doubt, they would have been in very small numbers. It's uh, not possible that any Spanish troops were involved. Um, it's maybe possible some Illyrian troops may have been there, but I even doubt that. These are the specific modifications to the standard army list for this period. The main difference is the inclusion of Gaelic troops, which we know were present based on at least one source. Some scholars doubt this, but I'll go with common belief. Look, it's entirely possible that all the Gauls revolted before the battle, so when the Romans went into battle there were actually no Gaelic troops present, but it's also possible that only a small part of the Gaelic force revolted, killed a few Romans and ran off to join up with Hannibal before the battle, uh, one of the things that we'll never know for certain. The only other modification to this period is to allow the Latin Allied infantry to adopt their traditional fighting style. Look, it's very possible that this early in the war, some troops may have been formed up in this manner, but I suspect uh, they would have been fairly low numbers. Now let's move over to the Carthaginian army. The Carthaginian army was varied, to say the least, but Hannibal had a core of highly experienced veterans with a small, smaller number of Gaelic troops supporting him in this battle. As with our Roman example, I'm looking or I'm showing you the lost battle scenario which shows the Carthaginian force mix. Um, as with the uh, Romans, I'm not going to be using this. I've only placed this here as a FYI so people can get an idea of what other game designers think the force mixes should have looked like. Now we'll look at the uh, Carthaginian force mix using uh, Polybius source material. Hannibal had arrived in Italy with 20,000 infantry and 6,000 cavalry. At Trebia, this had grown to 29,000 infantry, of which 21,000 were close order and 8,000 light infantry. And in addition, he had 11,000 cavalry as well as some elephants. There would have been, among the infantry, there would have been a combination of Africans, Iberians and Gauls. Now, the proportion in each case is not really known, apart from the fact that we know that 8,000 of the close order infantry were Gauls. In addition, there were elephants, the survivors of the 37, which he had left in Iberia. I assume that means that he had 37 war elephants. This shows a possible Carthaginian army list composition based on the information we have. Now there's a bit of guesswork involved here, like for example the breakdown between the Spanish and the Libyans. I've assumed it's a 50-50 breakdown. The same with the cavalry. I'm assuming that, um, you know, that well we know how many Spanish cavalry there were. I'm um, assuming the rest were basically Gaelic cavalry. And I'm also assuming that uh, there were only 450 or maybe a maximum of 500 Libby-Phoenician cavalry. The remainder would have been Numidian. 
Now we know that uh, Hannibal had two thousand Balearic or one to two thousand Balearic slingers at Cannae. So, as a result, we could assume that um, there were close to 2,000 Balearic slingers and the rest were javelmen. Now, let's look at our DBMM version 2.1 army list, and this shows the core troops of the Carthaginian army. Now, the list is small because the Carthaginian armies of various battles were very dependent on what troop types were around. Uh, so, you'll find the bulk of the troop types are in the special army list exceptions for location and period. Now, the Carthaginians probably had at least 450 Libby Phoenician cavalry, uh, as these were present later in 2016. There may have been more, but I suspect more, no more than 500. Now, the Carthaginians possessed about 4,000 Numidian light cavalry at Cunni, so they had at least this number and probably more. Now, the Libyan spearmen were the highest quality troops within the Carthaginian army. At this point of the war, they would have been armed in their traditional equipment. Later they used captured Roman armour. Um, one thing does puzzle me. It looks like Hannibal had more Libyan spearmen at Cunni than they, he had here. Perhaps he received reinforcements from somewhere, or perhaps the Libyans welcomed other people into their ranks to increase the number. The Carthaginians had 6,000 skirmish javelmen. Um, some of them may have been armed with bows, uh, and we know the Balearic slingers were a separate troop category at this particular point in time, or at least in this army list. There is no mention of Carthaginian bolt shooters in the battle, so I would expect none were used. Now we come to the special options for Carthage before 201 BC, which covers our battle period of 218 BC. The Carthaginians probably had about 2,000 Spanish cavalry, most of which were medium cavalry. Now, we're really not certain how many Spanish foots were present, but if it was 4,500, then this is less than the deployed at Cunni. Once again, perhaps reinforcements, or perhaps they welcomed other people into the ranks. I suspect any skirmishers were in the skirmish total, so this only includes the medium infantry. Now, uh, we know that the Carthaginians had from one to 2,000 Balearic slingers at Cunni. I suspect in 218 BC, that total was closer to 2,000. Uh, we think there may have been up to 37 elephants present in this battle. It's also possible there were a lot less than this. Another special army list supplement. Uh, this is the Carthaginians when they're not in Spain. And as a result, they had the following troop types available if it was before 201 BC. This mainly represents the Gaelic troops. I'm guessing the Carthaginians had about 4,000 Gaelic cavalry, most of which were medium cavalry. We do have a source which indicates that the Carthaginians had 8,000 Gaelic close order infantry. This does not probably include any skirmish or light infantry, but I suspect there would have been probably very few of those. Now, um, I am absolutely uncertain how many Ligurians were in the Carthaginian army. It's possible some of the Gaelic, Gaelic total included these people, uh, or alternatively, um, maybe it doesn't. Um, there is no source material that I can point to. The uh, next special supplement uh, basically allows you to upgrade the Commander-in-Chief, which is Hannibal, to brilliant status. Well, obviously Hannibal was clearly brilliant. This shows a modern battle memorial, uh, somewhere close to where the battle was actually fought. Um, I'm wondering, could this actually be what an African elephant with a um, thing on top looks like? I can uh, assure you there are some figure gamers or figure manufacturers which actually create elephants which look very much like this. Let's now look at the battlefield. This is a deployment according to Wiki. If these scales are correct, the opposing armies covered a front line of about 2,000 to 2,400 metres, which makes it wider that, uh, than Cunny. The Roman, um, I mean, basically in terms of how the battle flowed, the Romans, the Carthaginians sent out some Numidians to annoy the Romans. The Romans chased the Numidians before they had breakfast early in the morning, crossed over the river where they got wet and they were freezing, and then they were met by Hannibal's army. Hannibal then uh, springs an ambush, but the Romans managed to break through the centre, even though they did have very heavy losses. This shows the possible location of the Carthaginian camp. The exact location is unknown. The Carthaginians deployed half their cavalry on each wing, which is about 5,000 per wing. 
Carthaginian infantry were in the centre. There was 20,000 heavy infantry with 8,000 light infantry to their front. These fell back to the wings when the Romans approached. This shows the possible location of Margot's detachment, which consisted of 1,000 infantry and 1,000 cavalry, and that was used to spring the ambush. This shows the um, possible or approximate location of the river Trebia. On the Roman side, the Roman cavalry were also divided up half on each flank with 2,000 per wing. The Romans deployed their infantry, 36,000 men in the centre, of which there were 16,000 Romans, 20,000 Latin allies and um, Gauls. Of this total, 30,000 were heavy infantry. This is the Roman camp, the possible location of the Roman camp, uh, Sopronius's camp specifically. Scipio's camp was further upstream, which is below or in the lower direction of this. This is the approximate location of the Po River. And finally we come to the approximate location of Placentia. This is a more detailed map of the battle from an Italian source, however it looks like it's based on a modern map of the area. For the course of the battle I'm going to be using material from the History Marche channel on YouTube and this gives us a very good view of the course of the battle. I strongly recommend people to search for this channel as it's excellent. The video that covers this battle also includes the pre-battle. There was a lot of activity beforehand and it gives you a much bigger picture of it. I'm only going to be specifically focusing on the, uh, the actual battle which probably lasted from the morning um, right up until the, the evening. Early in the morning the Numidians harass the Roman camp as you can see in the bottom right corner with the Romans quickly forming up for battle before they had breakfast and then they started to advance against the Numidians. The Midians retreat before the Romans. The Numidians retreat across the Trebia River and Hannibal then starts forming up his army for battle. The Romans follow, cross over the river as well and then begin to form up for battle. Uh, however, the Romans are hungry, cold and wet and the sources indicate that it took the Romans several hours to form up for battle. This shows the uh, troop types and deployments, which we've already kind of covered in the past. Um, as I indicated, it took the Romans several hours to deploy, so I assume that the time right now must be past midday, as it's winter and the days are rather short. So it would have taken the Romans a couple of hours to get out of the camp, advance to this position, and then form up. The Romans decide to attack uh, with both sides meeting. Now the Romans begin to push forward in the centre, but the Carthaginian flanks um, do extremely well. Uh, the, apparently the Carthaginian elephants cause a difficulty with the Roman cavalry. However, the Romans at this point had specially trained velites that uh, were designed to combat elephants, and they probably did a very good job, killing probably most, if not all, but one elephant. Now, to the rear of the Roman position, the Carthaginians had secretly deployed a force of 1,000 cavalry and 1,000 light troops, and they now move out to attack the Roman rear. On the flanks, the Carthaginians are pursuing the retreating Roman cavalry, so they've clearly won their battle. With their entire cavalry force, the Carthaginians then strike the Roman rear. Now, this assumes that um, very few cavalry were left to pursue the Roman cavalry, um, I suspect some of the Numidians continued to pursue the Romans, but not too many. While the Carthaginians are um, basic, well, basically they've surrounded the Roman army and were really hammering the flanks, the Roman centre managed to break through the Gaelic of Carthaginian centre. So um, they managed to escape. However, most of the Roman allied troops were killed or captured. After breaking through, the Roman legionaries then retreat back to Placentia. While Hannibal failed to destroy the Roman centre, and thus the Roman legionaries, the Roman casualties were heavy nonetheless. The Carthaginians did lo lose most of their elephants in the battle, which was probably Hannibal's main loss. Because of the ambush, this is a hard battle to recreate, unless you start with both armies facing each other. If you try and recreate the manoeuvring before the battle actually occurred, you'd end up with a very different battle, but probably a similar result. I'll create a simple scenario for pre-stags and my DBMM troop type version 
of this game called pre-17th century warfare, as long as the armies start facing each other and with a clear Roman victory conditions forcing them to advance, you should get a reasonably good game. What I'm showing you here is the DBMM troop types for this battle using the pre-17th century war game rules. So the element scale is 1 in 1250 scale rather than the scale used in DBMM. But nonetheless, it's um, using the DBMM point system. Basically, we have a 249-point Carthaginian army against a 214-point Roman army. I do wonder how this would play using DBMM, but DBMM has a very different scale and you'd need a lot more elements than this in order to reproduce the battle at any level of sort of accuracy. Now, if you want to know what the uh, force mixes look like using the pre-stag point system, this is what it shows. The rules tend to give the Carthaginians a panic level equal to 50% of their full VP level, and the Romans a panic level equal to 60% of their VP level. I, ex I expect I should only give the Romans really one commander in this example. Um, on the other hand, the Carthaginians have a significant advantage regardless, so probably they don't need this additional advantage. And thus we come to the end of my part 9 of my military history series videos, in this case covering the Battle of Trebia. I find this battle reasonably interesting and in some ways very similar to Cani. Um, in some ways a lot easier for the Carthaginians to win, even though the Romans, in theory, should be able to burst through the centre. Anyway, um, nonetheless, a battle which I most certainly will do some playtesting around. Alle guten Dingen kommen zu einem Ende.